Today we're going to meet Sir Catherine Williams, probably one of Wales' most famous artists of the 20th century. Catherine Williams was born in North Wales, where the majority of his work was made. Hello Catherine Williams. Why do you paint so many landscapes? I just, I love the landscape where I live and my ancestors have lived there from time immemorial, so it was natural for me just to paint the landscape and the people. You became very successful after leaving teaching in the 1960s. Why do you think that happened? Luckily, I launched myself as a painter onto the world when Wales was changing. And the sons of miners, ministers, they couldn't have bought pictures themselves. They hadn't got the money. But because of better education in Wales, their children went to the universities and they became schoolmasters, architects, engineers, and suddenly a whole new market opened and I tapped that market. They seemed to like my pictures because my pictures reminded them of their homes on the farms or of uh, chapels where their fathers were, were preaching or something like that. I was the first artist, Welsh artist, I think, ever to live in Wales and make a living in Wales. <laughs> Catherine Williams' painting style is easily recognised by his thick, layered oil paint. His paintings reflect the landscape of Wales through his rich dark tones and layered paint, almost like the slate and rocks in the surrounding North Wales landscape. Catherine Williams didn't just paint in North Wales. From the 1950s to the early 2000s, Catherine painted along the Grand Canals of Venice. Caffin was an admirer of the artist Canaletto, who was renowned for his impressive works that conveyed the spirit and the feeling of the Grand Canals. Yay! Buongiorno, peeps! I am Canaletto, the greatest Italian painter in history. Well, at least I think so. I love to paint the canals and grand buildings of Venice with the most vivid colours and realism. I'm a, like a high definition painter, don't you think, eh? In 1968, I was lucky enough to get a Winston Churchill Fellowship to go to Patagonia to record the people, the landscape, the birds, the flowers, the animals, doing the whole, whole record, really, of Patagonia. And another little old lady came from Blind of a to a show I had in Carnarvon a long, long time ago. And she fell in love with one painting. Oh, I must have that painting. Oh, too, how much is it? £62. Pounds. And she said, oh, it's far too much. I couldn't possibly pay it. Oh, dear, dear, but I do like it. Oh, I love that painting. I'll buy it. And she pulled out her checkbook and her pen and she started writing. And then she dropped down dead before she signed it. <laughs> But she died happy. I'm lucky to live in the part of the world I do live in. It's a very, very lovely part of mountains and coast. And of course we have the hill farmers, and I used to draw them surreptitiously behind stone walls so you wouldn't see me. I 
used to be able to go out in the snow when it was below freezing point. And I never wore gloves or anything. And my left hand with my palette on it used to be immobile the whole time I was painting. And it was thought it got cold. I found that I painted maybe up to an hour, an hour and a half in this freezing cold. And at the end of it, when I'd finished, my hands would be absolutely roasting warm. As soon as I started cleaning the paint off my palette, I'd get cold. The wonderful thing about Cuffin's work is that his landscapes seem so familiar. You can almost feel the weather, the wind, smell the air, hear the noises of the surrounding land. Cuffin. 